Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Stamp Cat Stamps, where I share with you the things that I learned from my stamp collection. In the last episode of the series, we had just arrived in Winnipeg and visited the Winnie the Pooh statue in Assiniboine Park. Today we will be exploring downtown Winnipeg for some extreme philately. I found a few stamps in my collection that show popular landmarks in Winnipeg, like this one, the Chinatown Gate. Or this one, which shows the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. But the stamp that we will spend the most time looking at today is this one. This stamp, issued in 1938, shows the Upper Fort Garry Gate in the city of Winnipeg. It is the only remaining structure of what used to be a major trading post in the 1800s. Let's take a look at the geography of Winnipeg and consider its significance for the times. In the 1800s, this entire area encompassing most of central Canada was called Rupert's Land, and it was owned by a fur trade company, the Hudson Bay Company, or HBC. Yes, it is the same Hudson Bay Company that we know of as the department store today. One of their major distribution centers was called York Factory, located on the Hudson Bay. Think of it as the original Amazon warehouse. All kinds of goods like fur, beads, tools, and food were shipped here and then redistributed to sell and trade at other locations. And since the major method of long distance travel in those days was by boat, most trading posts were built along waterways. Fort Garry was a trading post built at the junction of two waterways, the Red River and Assiniboine River, which was along the trade route up to York Factory. However, the fur traders of the HBC were definitely not the first people to inhabit this area. In 1812, Thomas Douglas, the Scottish Lord Selkirk, had been slowly buying up shares of HBC and finally had enough to buy his own land and start a settlement. Over in Scotland, something called the Highland Clearances was going on where poor farmer tenants were being forcibly evicted from their land and struggling to find new homes and new work. Selkirk had a dream to give these poor evicted farmers a new home and new land to work on. And while this stamp issued by Canada in 1962 shows the kind of life that he probably expected for his new colony in Canada, when they actually got there, it was a little bit more like this. You see, even in the 1800s, this area was extremely diverse. There were indigenous groups living here, like the Ojibwe and Cree, the Métis, who are of mixed French-Canadian and indigenous ancestry, the HBC fur trappers, and now the new Scottish settlers. I love the comparison of these two stamps. The second stamp issued in 2012 does a much better job of showing the actual diversity of this region. The Scottish settlers quickly realized there was also a rivalry going on here between the English-based HBC traders and a Montreal-based company called Northwest Company who employed mostly French and Métis workers. The new Scottish settlers had a rough winter and there wasn't really enough food to support all of them suddenly moving there. So in 1814, the colony governor issued something called the Pemmican Proclamation. Wait, so what is pemmican? Pemmican is a food. It was a major food at the time made from dried up buffalo meat, fat, and berries. <laughs> Yum. It was kind of like buffalo beef jerky with berries. Métis men would hunt the buffalo and the women would process the meat. A skilled Métis woman could process 10 buffalo per day. And while maybe not so savory to us, the food was a staple at the time because it could keep for long periods of time without spoiling and also provide a good source of protein and energy. Back to the Pemmican Proclamation. So the governor of the colony announced a new rule that because these new Scottish settlers were starving, nobody was allowed to export 
transport any pemmican from the colony for a year. This was a huge problem for the Northwest Trading Company because pemmican was one of their main exports. They relied on trading it to survive. And secondly, all of Selkirk's Scottish settlers were sponsored by Hudson Bay Company. So why should Northwest Company have to go bankrupt trying to support these random people who moved here that they had nothing to do with? What followed was years of something called the Pemmican Wars. Both sides were basically attacking each other's forts and trading posts, attacking any groups of traders who were found trying to sneak pemmican out of the area. The fighting continued for seven years until 1821, when both companies were facing declining profits and also pressure from the government for the two companies to resolve their conflicts. The HBC ended up buying out the Northwest Company and the two companies were merged. So what did they build as their new big joint trading post? Fort Gary. Fort Gary was built in 1835, named after one of the governors of Hudson Bay Company. At its prime, it was a huge complex that included a governor's house, office building, and multiple storehouses for goods. During the mid-1800s, Fort Gary was the busy center of all trade and commerce in the whole area. But after 50 years of trade and success, something changed. And that something was the railroad. Travel by boat had now become obsolete, and there was a new area of town that was starting to emerge as the center of attention, and that new area was called Winnipeg. Now Winnipeg has grown from an early pioneer settlement to a big city with hundreds of thousands of people. Some areas have changed so much, it's nearly unrecognizable from the past. But some memories of the old settlement still remain, like the Fort Gary Gate. By 1888, all of the buildings at Fort Gary had been sold, destroyed, and dismantled. The only thing left standing was the Great Limestone Front Gate. And it stayed that way for over 100 years, until... In 2014, a new park area opened up at Upper Fort Gary. It now has a state-of-the-art light wall with over 1,000 LED lights that play sound and music to tell the history of this place. And it can all be operated by an app from your smartphone. So this interactive wall, you can use an app and it tells you, um, so it tells you about what performance is playing and then you can try to like play performances. I want to get a closer look. enjoying the wall which has like light show and lots of art kind of talking about the history of the place back in the 1800s it was super important for a trading post and now it has been revitalized to a park so I'll have a look around You can download the Upper Fort Gary app on your phone and you can spend an afternoon exploring the place and learning about the historical events that happened here. Hmm, looks like something about a rebel group trying to take on the country of Canada. Well, I think maybe that's a story for next time. Bye for now.